all right everyone welcome back to another game ball video and i knew i knew in my heart it was going to be bad i just had no idea how bad it was going to be let's cue the music and talk about dragon age the veil guard Alright, so the new Dragon Age The Veil Guard gameplay confirms that the game is ultra woke. We knew this from the beginning considering they had a, uh, what was it, a gender, mancer, witch thing, whatever, running it. And they had top surgery scars and talked about everybody being poly in the game and all that other nonsense. It really pushed DEI to the limits. Character design was absolutely abysmal. It looks like Fortnite set in a in a weird fantasy medieval world that kind of crossed over with the MCU somehow, and just absolute nonsense. It's got every racial trope in the book, every sexual trope in the book, it seems like, just from looking at it from the outside. Now, I haven't played the game, and I'm not going to, and you can criticize me for that all you want. I'm not giving a fucking dollar to Bioware. They can suck my ass if you think I'd pay them a dollar. At this point in time... They're one of the worst companies out there. They're right up there at Activision and Ubisoft. I'd love to see all three of these companies go right down that toilet where they belong. Flush them out with all that bullshit that they're trying to feed us. But let's look at this a little bit because this is utterly insane. So, with a review embargo released for Dragon Age The Veil Guard and a number of physical copies already making their way into the hands of gamers, new gameplay confirms the rumors and developer statements that the game is ultra-woke. We all remember... <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Why would you use this picture as something to represent your character designer? I don't care if this is the worst looking character you can make. What a piece of shit. I mean, honestly, looking at this, this looks like it, it looks like a mobile game or something. It's just absolutely horrible. Anyway, earlier this month, the playtester broke his NDA and informed YouTube Nure that the game was ultra woke and included the Kunari companion Tash informing the player character that she is non-binary. He said, she told me that I am a non-binary person. How the hell that a fantasy game and Thetas have the word non-binary? She said that I don't like men and I don't like women. I identify myself as non-binary, just like that. Is that what non-binary means? I thought, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not well versed in all this, but I've been exposed to this garbage for years now and I'm, I'm an intelligent man and I'm trying to understand it, but you know, they change the meanings constantly, so um, I thought non-binary means you didn't identify as a man or a woman, or maybe sometimes you were one or sometimes you were the other, you weren't sure, whatever. Maybe that was gender fluid when you sometimes do it. Non-binary is just neither one. But this is saying that she doesn't like men and doesn't like women, so she's not binary what, what the hell does she like? And who cares? It's a fucking game. <laughs> God, man. Anyway, Nuri shared a screenshot of dialogue from the game that does indeed prove that this dialogue exists. Tash says at one point during the game, non-binary, I just said, and I'm going to use they instead of she from now on. She also shared another screenshot from the game that reveals Bioware included gender identity options in its dialogue choice wheel. Oh my God, man. Nuri commented, for anyone still on the fence about what I mean when I say this game is woke and it will let you know at every single turn having diverse characters is not being woke, having fantasy characters using modern day language is being woke. And that is very true, right? Very true. You can have diversity in a game and it can feel natural and it can feel normal, right? That's not a problem, you know? I think if I look back at like Skyrim, for instance, and there was some diversity there, right? people from different regions of the world had different looks to them just like they do here on on earth right you can tell when people come from african origins or from um, norwegian origins you know up north in in, uh, in europe you can tell people that come from asia or central america and south america there's different looks for different people that come from different regions it's a natural thing it's in their dna it's in their blood my God, man, <laughs> all this other nonsense where you try to make everybody all the time everywhere, it just it doesn't feel right. You know, it doesn't feel right. One of the worst offenders of this is the Horizon games, right? I enjoyed the first one immensely. The second one, eh, it was okay. Uh, 
but it really got woked out in the end. It was pretty, I mean, overall it was kind of insufferable in the long run. The more I played it, the less I enjoyed it. But one of the main things that always bothered me about that series was it takes place a thousand years after some great holocaust on the planet that kills off 90% of humanity, I believe the number was roughly, a huge number of people. And here we are a thousand years later, and we go to a little village of 100, 200 people, and there is a full-on black dude, a full-on Chinese lady, a full-on Hispanic person, a full-on white person, a full-on ginger, you know, just all these people of all these diverse looks and all that, and it just didn't feel right. You know, it just absolutely didn't feel right. That's forced diversity. That's annoying. You know, Guerrilla Games, they should have, they could have done something good. They could have had some fun, and they could have said, you know what, we're going to make this tribe lean more towards this type of a person, you know, like in San Francisco in the in the sequel, they could have made them all kind of Asian looking, you know, or given them some of the Asian features, even though there's going to be some mixture in there because a thousand years has passed, but there's a large Asian population in California, so they could have done that, right? They could have done something like that. They could have, if they had something that took place in uh, like uh Oh, well, so they had Vegas, you know, they had Vegas. Well, Vegas is a very transient thing. You really wouldn't find anyone there. I mean, maybe that, yeah, that would be a weird one there. Tough one. Everybody would just be a big hodgepodge of whatever, you know, a big mixing, melting pot of humanity there. But, yeah, that, that would have given you some kind of interesting dynamics and different tribes with slightly different looks, and you could see the little nuances, maybe in how they dress, maybe in the... the the makeup that they wore, you know, because they all had face paint, war paint, and stuff like that, which was cool. But man, they really screwed that up. But anyway, so here we go. I don't know how we got onto that. But yeah, <laughs> so that's the diverse characters things. In that case, that was woke. It didn't work. But in other cases, it's not so bad if it's done naturally. Uh, she shared another screenshot of the dialogue wheel that allows players to establish transgender identity and unlocks new dialogue options in future conversations. Nuri commented, Bioware is dead and the shills have killed it. Let's take a look at a couple of these here right now. So, this first one here, this is Tash talking. And, and just look at the gayness in this character. Just the way they hold themselves and all that. Just a complete... That's a dude. Right? That's a dude. Not binary just said, and I'm going to use they instead of she from now on. So they already went by she pronouns. So this is one confused Quinari. And just... The absolute char the character design is just despicable. I mean, look at it. Absolutely horrifying. And then here we got um, gender identity options as one of your choices here, right? So I guess this is uh, you're being asked a question or you have a chance to respond to something. Not, nice story, but that's not me. Gender identity options. When you click on that, it probably brings up some more options for you. And then we got this one here. This one really got me good. Um, Rook, take a look, take a long, hard look at it, kid. It'll always show the face of a hero who can get it done. Establish transgender identity and unlocks new dialogue options in future conversations. So that's how that's how deep this stuff is baked into the game that it actually choosing that is going to unlock new dialogue options down the road. It's it's comical, right? It's absolutely comical. I mean <laughs> Another screenshot of the game shared by Anuri also appeared to show a conversation leading up to Tash identifying as non-binary or discussion taking place soon after the reveal. Oh yeah, here we go. Neve informs Tash, some of my friends in Minrathos talk about not feeling comfortable in their own skin as a man, as a woman. Nuri commented, Neve and Tash talk about the latter's identity. I think to say this game is extremely woke is a pretty safe bet. And I told you so. And I'd like to say that too. I told you so. I knew this was going to be hot garbage. Now, the reviews are out, and it's all 9s and 10s and all that kind of stuff. IGN gave it a 9 out of 10. And who trusts an IGN? They gave Concord a 7 out of 10 and Dustborn the same, I believe. Um, and the person that reviewed it identifies as non-binary, so of course they're going to be creaming their jeans over this piece of shit game. You know, I'm interested in seeing what the actual players think, the game, the players. I think the last um, game in the series sold about 12 million copies. I don't see this one coming near to that. This is going to be, this is going to be a nail in the coffin of Bioware. I think Bioware is going to really get hit hard from this game. It's going to underperform immensely, and um, the backlash it's getting already is just, it's un unreal. 
unreal. I mean, you combine that woke garbage with the shitty character design, and and from what I hear, it's rather uninspired in the gameplay department and all that, and it's just, it really doesn't have much going for it. Even the bad guys and all that, they just, everything's kind of comic booky looking, and it's very frustrating. And Now, I understand Bioware put out some of the greatest games of all times, you know, the Mass Effect games and all that, so you would think that, you know, and a lot of people hold on to nostalgia with stuff like that, right? Oh, Bioware's great and all that. But what you got to remember is, it takes years to develop games, and every time a cycle's done and a game is released, um, and even during the process, there's going to be changes in that studio. People are going to come and go. Uh, they're going to quit, they're going to get fired, they're going to retire, they're going to get tired of things, they're going to move, they're going to have family emergencies, whatever. You know, they're going to not like the way the the company's going forward and they're going to leave it, you know, or something like that. Um, bigger companies are going to buy up smaller companies. They're going to change the culture of them. We see that happening a lot. We're seeing that right now with um, Xbox buying up all these other studios and and that sort of thing and ended up closing them down because they just can't put out a decent game. They're just turn, turning out garbage game after garbage game. It's awful. So, you know, with this kind of thing, it's just going to continue. So the Bioware that you may love from Mass Effect and other games back in the day, it's dead. Those people are gone. There may be a handful left, but the rest of them are gone. You know, so, yeah. It, and it's, it's time for these guys to go, too, I think. Whoever greenlit this and was in charge of this game and thought that, I mean, you know, they, they'll, they'll give you a hard time be like, well, you know, I remember pronouns showing up at the beginning of, what was it, Starfield, you know, when it was released. And everybody's like, oh, why are you getting mad over some pronouns, bro? You know, and it's like, all right, whatever, you know. It's a little thing, but it's still there. It's like body type, A or B instead of male or female. It's a small, small thing, but there's a slippery slope. People will call that a logical fallacy and all that. No, it's a reality. Look at history. Look at the last 20 years. Look at film. Look at video games. Look at all of it. Every time an inch is given, a mile is taken, and things are just pushed to a further and further extreme, and it's absolutely revolting how far it's gotten. You know, we went from gay marriage to uh, maps, you know, minor attracted persons in the, in, in the span of, you know, what, 20, less than 20 years? Dude, what's going on with that? You know, we went from don't talk to strangers to strangers on the internet telling their, your, your kids not to talk to you as parents. It's absolutely insane. We've gone from games being insanely great and fun and all that and, and good times and yeah, they had a message and all that, but it was applied with some nuance to games that just hammer garbage like this home. You know, playing a game like this, just coming up to that scene where it's like, well, I'm non-binary, that just is going to pull you right out of the game. There are certain things that will pull you out of a game or a movie in a heartbeat, and that's one of them. And if you don't understand what I'm saying when I say that, then, then you're just lost, man. You're dumb. Because that doesn't belong in that game. You know, there's no way that belongs in the game. Somebody said somewhere it was like this. It would be the same as if one of the characters in the game suddenly pulled out an iPhone. You know, that's how it's modern day language, modern day concepts, and all that in a game that's you know took place many many years ago in a fantasy setting and all that. Yeah, it's not real. It's not Earth and all that. But you know what I'm saying. So it's it's just completely ridiculous at this point. Um, anyway, as noted above, none of this is surprising in the least. Back in 2022, the game director, a man claiming the identity of a woman who, with a name not given at birth, Corrine Bush, declared in a developer story on Bioware's website the Dragon Age franchise is inherently very queer. Well, congratulations. You released a gay piece of garbage. Uh, Bush also said, as a queer trans woman, I have a perspective on the games that not everyone has. Dragon Age has long been a place where LGBT folks can see people like themselves. Represented respectfully, it's inherently very queer, and it's such a rare thing for marginalized communities to have representation where we feel proud and powerful in how we are depicted. He added, it's so deeply meaningful for so many, I often get emotional when I think about what it would have meant to a younger version of myself to see someone like her in a game, and as a hero no less. I hope it can be in a safe place for our queer players to know they're not alone, and they're brilliant worthy, and they're not only welcome, but celebrated. Yeah, you're not celebrated, and you're not going to be welcome much longer if you guys keep pushing this garbage. I mean, the backlash is there, it's growing on a daily basis, and it's gaining momentum. 
you know, companies are learning that this is not profitable. Now, they're going to try and get around it a little bit. They're going to claim they're shutting down this program and that program, and maybe they will. Um, Sweet Baby Inc.'s going to change its name, disappear, maybe go out of business and come back as something else. You know, they're very insidious with what they do. So you got to stay vigilant. you got to keep watching. And at the first sign of trouble, you let everybody you know know about it, talk about it, put it out there, let people know, hey, wait, 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 whoop. I just discovered this about this. This is warrants being looked into. You know, even if you don't have all the facts at the time, at least say this is something that we need to investigate, and then somebody can investigate it. If you don't have the means to do it or the ability to do it, somebody else can and will, and they'll expose it if that's the case. I mean, it's this has been happening left and right. Uh, Bush described himself in his profile on X as a queerosexual gender mancer and a supporter of Black Lives Matter. One of the greatest grifts of all time right there, boy. Oh, God. They're so predictable, they're so unintelligent, and they're so exhausting. They really are. You know, I want all these tourists out of the gaming industry. I want them gone completely. Just take them and send them on their way. On top of this, Bioware revealed a number of press interviews that all the characters in the game were pansexual and will be engaging in disordered relationships no matter what the player does. Uh, creative director John Epler told Game Rant, there's a difference between player sexual and pansexual. All companions are canonically pansexual. Bush informed IGN that the companions were pansexual as well. IGN's Alex Stedman reported, Bush insists that they're all specifically pansexual, and that might come through in what you learn about their backstories. Bush then explained their past experiences or partners will reference them and indeed who they'll become romantic with. He continued, for instance, when we saw Harding, I might be playing a straight male character flirting with her, but I choose not to pursue a romance. She might get together with Tash. So my perception, my identity has no bearing on their identities, and that comes through really strongly. Who gives a shit? <laughs> That's what I want to know. This is the gayest shit I ever heard. <laughs> he went on to detail, but it's not until the later parts of the game where you really commit to romance and it gets pretty spicy. This is also stupid. Also stupid. I wonder what percentage of Bioware right now the developers are female. I'm kind of curious about that. You guys let me know down in the comments if you know uh, what that number is. I'm going to look that up a little bit later. Maybe I'll do a video on that in a day or two because this sounds like a game that's put together by a bunch of homos and, and women. And that's pretty much it. I doubt there's a straight guy within uh, spitting distance of the studio. Um, anyway, it was then confirmed by a number of creators after Bioware gave them seven hours to play the game that the character creator not only featured top surgery scars, but it gave players the option to choose various pronouns and allowed them to choose man, women, and non-binary. Yes, yeah, so what do you guys think? Were we right or were we right? A lot of us have been talking about this. It's ultra woke. It may sell well, you know, because the name alone is, is a selling point, just like Assassin's Creed is, just like uh, Silent Hill 2. You know, name recognition goes a long way for these things. But it's not going to sell like uh, the last one. Uh, what was that? Inquisition? I think Inquisition sold around 12 million copies. This one's not even going to come close to that, I don't think. And... Um, it's going to peter out. I think it's going to have a nice little spike in the beginning. comes out on Halloween. It's still not out yet. Uh, Pre-orders are up. I know it's kind of up a little bit. Uh, people are kind of fired up about it now, but it's going to it's going to crash and burn pretty quick, I imagine. And um, just kind of peter out down the road, and it's going to hurt Bioware. It's going to cost Bioware some jobs. You know, and a lot of people out there, you know, all the nines and tens out there, they might tell you it's a great game and all that, and you're welcome. You know, if you value their opinions and trust them, then by all means, you let them influence your decision but you know a million people can tell you that a shit sandwich tastes delicious but it's still a shit sandwich right so anyway i'm going to sign off guys thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe to the channel ring that bell for notifications leave a like on the video it's a huge help for me and i'll see you all next time until then peace